Hi, I'm Wanda from Go Laser Go, and today I'm going to be showing you our latest laser machine. Now, this is an Aitza L2 24 watt machine, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Now, Aitza did approach us and asked if we'd like to try out one of their machines and do a review, and of course, we said yes, we'd be very happy to do that. So, this is apparently a second generation product, and it has a lot of uh, improvements on previous models. And now, as you can see looking at it, it's a really solid, well built machine. And what I love about it is the Ys are encased in the X axis, so you end up with a really nicely finished look. On a lot of our other machines, the wires sort of dangle in, in midair and, and they look a little ugly, but this looks really, really nicely finished. Now it does have a large work surface of 410 millimeters by 410 millimeters, which I think is about 16 inches. So it's our largest machine by far. Now, it was relatively easy to put together until we got to the transfer shaft, and then we had a few issues getting that working properly. Uh, the main problem was that we had trouble getting it aligned. Well, actually, the biggest problem was getting it unwrapped. The plastic wrap wrapping was a bit of a nightmare to get off. Um, very challenging. So let's take a look at the speed of the engraving on this machine. Now apparently it has an engraving speed of 54,000 millimeters per minute, which is way faster than any of our other machines. In fact, Aitza says it's the fastest machine of its kind on the market and it will reduce your working time by 40 to 60 percent, which is pretty darn good. It means if you're doing projects for Etsy or for the markets, you're going to get them done in a lot faster time. Now this machine has an autofocus function and that's a standout feature. With our other machines we need to use a spacer to adjust the laser head to the material. Well this machine has an autofocus feature which means it will self adjust its focal length to the thickness of your material. We had to set up the autofocus feature in Lightburn software but this is easy to do by just following the instructions in the manual that comes with your machine. Now you can see the autofocus function working on the screen at the moment. There's going to be times when you do need to do a manual focus, and that's when you're using cardstock, fabric, or slate, or something with an uneven surface. Now, Aitza have provided a focus block for this, and you can slide it under the laser head and adjust with the knob on top, or you can stand it up against the laser head and also do the manual adjustment. Now the machine comes with air assist which helps to reduce burning that can happen on your projects and the air assist on this machine is super quiet and the airflow is adjustable and it only works when the machine is running. It has a double air filtration cover that removes dust and prevents clogging. Now the machine comes with a 4.3 inch movable touchscreen and this helps to streamline your workflow. It's really nice having everything in one place where you can change your settings and set up an engraving file and you can operate the machine offline using the touchscreen controller. So you can see here we're just working through some of the screens. Now the touchscreen controller attaches to the front of the machine as it's magnetized so you always know where it is. Now this machine has a wonderful feature that remembers the engraving position in, in the event of a power failure. So this is the power loss recovery function. And it just seamlessly picks up where you stopped engraving and it allows you to continue your project from the exact spot where it stopped and so there's no glitches in the design. Okay, so we've set the function and now what happens is it's locked the head so you can no longer push the machine into place. You have to use these buttons on here and they to shift the head up to where you want it. Okay, so we're just doing that now, and then we've come across. Okay, so we've got it sort of in the area we think it needs to be. So I'll just do some, uh, we set this at bottom left, and then we frame, and you can see there that's framing, and it needs to go up a bit, so we'll just push the board over. Okay, so now it's in the position where we want it, and we stop the framing, and select our design. Okay, so now the machine is going to start engraving our car onto our piece of wood. Okay, so now to demonstrate if you have a power outage, what we're going to do is turn the machine off. And you can see that we've done that there, and everything just comes to a standstill and stops. So now we turn the machine back on, and what will happen is the laser head will move back to uh, this home position. And it'll just sit there, and the machine will ask us, okay, do you want to continue because it's recognized that there was a power failure and we're just going to say okay yes we do okay so it's detecting the file again and the head has moved back and it's just going to continue engraving now isn't that just amazing so you can see there that the design has finished off without any glitches 
Okay, so the Acer L2 has a laser cross sign that allows you to position your designs accurately. We will be creating a separate video on how to set this up as you need to calibrate first. But once you've done so, you will love this function. It's particularly good for small projects like this one where it can be difficult to line everything up. Now, as you can see, you don't need to place the material under the laser head. Instead, you can place it under the crosshair. And then in Lightburn, you just hit a button and the laser head moves over to the correct position. And you can see there it's perfectly aligned. Okay, now cutting different thicknesses is super easy with the automatic syncing feature of the L2. What this means is that is on each pass, the laser head will drop down, which enhances the cutting depth. Now, Aza says it's a 25% increase in cutting depth compared to other brands with the same power. But you can see it here, the head drops down once it's gone round and it needs to do the next pass. So let's talk safety features. Now, one of these features is the tilt protection feature and if the machine tilts too much like it goes up more than 15 degrees the machine will automatically stop working so it prevents accidents you'll get an alarm and you'll also get a message on the screen that is a child safety lock so the machine comes with a safety key and it will only operate when the key is turned on so when you finish for the day simply turn off the machine and remove the key now the L2 also has a flame detector, uh, so there's an alarm that warns you if flames are detected. Now you're burning through different materials and sometimes you may just uh, have something that catches a light. So the machine turns off, it sounds an alarm and it also gives you a message on the screen telling you that the flames have been detected and to restart the machine after you've removed the danger. So now for the fun part, let's put the L2 through its paces. So here is a wooden coaster that we're engraving on, the file is from Creative Fabrica, and all the settings and the files, uh, names and where you can get them, will be on the website. So head over there and uh, get all the details that you need. It does a great job, just look at that. So the next thing we made was a wooden giraffe name sign. Now we thought this name sign was really cute. It looked lovely in a baby's room. So we've used 3mm MDF board to make this sign. And you could use your creative skills to paint the sign and give it a unique touch. But it'll look lovely in a baby or toddler's room. So you can see how beautifully that's cut out. Aurelia is the name of Paula's niece. Now doesn't that sign look just beautiful? We really love it. So cute. So now let's engrave on a slate coaster and the L2 handles engraving on slate just perfectly and don't forget all the settings on how to do this and the files will all be over on the website so make sure you pop over there and get all those details so you can see there doesn't that look lovely and you can never have enough coasters. So we thought we'd put the L2 through its paces with the denim. We do a lot of uh, projects with the engraved denim and so we thought, well, we'll just see how it, it matches up. And as you can see, it's doing a beautiful job. Now you can see there it hasn't burnt through the denim. It's just removed that top layer, which is exactly what we want. There's no scorching or burning. And then when you pull the fabric, it doesn't tear. So we're doing another design. And this is on a different weight of denim. And so we're just giving a little test here to see how things go. And you can see it's just done a beautiful job. Really like how, how these designs turned out. And there's no scorching, burning, and it hasn't gone through the material. So let's see how it handles aluminium plate. Okay, so you can add a design to a, an aluminium plate. You can put it on your, I don't know, on your gate or something, or use in other craft projects. And so it's done a beautiful job, as you can see there. Okay, so now for another test, this is on cardstock, and what I'm going to do this time is engrave and cut on the, on the card, and you can see that it's doing a really, really nice job, so it's cutting the, the cardstock without burning it or scorching it, and this is a bonus because it means that I can engrave and cut without having to go and get out one of my other machines. Now look at that, so you've got the wings that are 3D effect, really, really lovely. Okay, so let's try a different weight of cardstock, and you can see it handles the different weights quite nicely. And again, I've engraved happy birthday on this one, and also cutting out the butterfly and the flowers. And then it will, once it's finished, it'll cut it out in the square. Now this can just be added to the front of a different coloured card to make it stand out. And you can lift the, the petals of the flowers up, and also the wings of the butterfly. So really, really nice. I like that. Now we had a few of these polished uh, wall tiles 
sitting around in our stash. So we thought what we'd do is give it a go and see how they come out. Um, actually, in hindsight, probably would have gone a bit, bit deeper, uh, use a bit more power perhaps. But actually, it turned out very well. I'm quite... Uh, I quite like how that's that's turned out. I was a bit surprised because this is a polished surface, uh, so it's very shiny. But that looks really, really good. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, if you think you might like one of these machines, I'll put a link in the description below as to where you can purchase one. I'll also put a link to the website where you'll find all of the settings and the files that we've used in this video. So if you've enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It does help our channel to build. And we'll catch you in the next video.